Hi, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is finite state machines. I'm going to explain what are they and why are they useful. And more importantly, why should you keep them in mind when making your game designs? But just a heads up, this is not a tutorial on how to implement one. I'm just going to conceptually go through everything I just said. Let's begin. Okay, so let's begin by stating a problem you will definitely encounter when you're designing a game. And that is giving movement to your character. So let's say you're making a 2D game and this is your main character. And you want him to respond depending on the inputs the player makes. We'll give him three basic actions. Jump, move forward and backwards, and crouch. And now I ask you, what would the algorithms for these actions look like? Well, in their simplest forms, You'd ask, is the player pressing the key corresponding to this action? If so, perform the action. And that's essentially what these three algorithms say. And they kinda work, but actually not. Just think about this. What happens if the player presses multiple keys? Well, then these algorithms fail miserably. And the reason for that is you can get multiple states at once. So let's say you were crouching and Nothing is preventing you from pressing the jump button and then jumping. So you would be both crouching and jumping simultaneously. And that doesn't make any sense. Although the other combinations may make sense. Well, the fact of the matter is we still have a bug and we need to fix it. So how would we go about solving it? Well, let's go with our intuition first and check whether we are jumping or crouching first. So in the jumping algorithm, Let's press the spacebar, and then let's check if we are crouching. If we are, then we do nothing, and if we aren't, we jump. The opposite is true for the crouch algorithm. We have to press the crouch button, and if we are not jumping, then we crouch. Otherwise, we do nothing. And, you know, this is a fairly reasonable solution. It will work, and it gets the job done. And the reason for that is this is a really simple system. You see, with more complex characters, this approach will soon reveal its flaws. So let's say now you want to give your hero the ability to double jump. How would you do that? Well, in order for a double jump to make sense, we have to be jumping first. So let's begin again by pressing the space key, and then let's check if we are not crouching. Then we have to check if we are jumping. If we are not, then we have to perform a regular jump, and if we are, we have to perform a double jump. And I want to bring your attention to the consequences of adding a new action to our previous work. You see, after adding this new functionality, some parts of our code broke, and we had to fix them. And to do so, we had to add even more boolean checks. And yeah, for this example, it's not that bad, and the checks are quite simple. But I want you to think what would happen with a complex character who has a lot of actions and interactions between them. Well, in that case, we'd have to add lots of boolean checks all over the place. And the worst part is, our code will break every single time we add a new feature. So unless the system you're trying to code is extremely simple, this approach is really, really inefficient and I don't recommend. Well, if you haven't already guessed it, this is where the state machines come to play. So, what is a finite state machine? Well, essentially, it is a graph. A graph which consists of states which will represent with boxes and arrows interconnecting them. You can have one, two, three, up to n states. Just remember, n is a finite number. The arrows represent transitions between states. The key concept of a state machine and the one that makes it so attractive is that it allows the system to be in one and only one state. The arrows indicate the rules that must be fulfilled for a state transition to take place. In case you don't know, FSMs are used in the real world. Some examples of devices that use this kind of system are vending machines, conveyor belts and simple mobile robots. Of course there are more applications where a state machine can be used, but this is just to give you a quick idea of what they are used for. Anyway, let's go through their characteristics real quick. The first point is the one I already said, which is 
the machine can be in one and only one state at a time. So for example, in the state machine I just drew, maybe we can be in state one and then transition to state two, and then go back to one, then go to state three, but we can never be in two and three at the same time, for example. The second point is that the transitions can only occur in specific scenarios dictated by design. In other words, they are hard-coded rules that depend on internal variables or even external inputs. So, why should you care about them again? Well, let's go back to our previous example, the 2D character. Exactly the same idea. We want to make him jump, move and crouch. But this time we're going to do it with a finite state machine. So let's begin by defining our default state, which will be the idle state, and then the other ones revolving around it. Jump, move and crouch. Now the transitions depend on the inputs the player makes. So for example, if we're idle, we can jump by pressing the spacebar, and once the jump is done, we return to the idle state. And while we're jumping, it doesn't matter if the player spams other keys, because the transition depends only on spacebar and its internal state whenever the jump finishes. And the same goes for all the other states. The rules required to transition from one state to another are well established, and therefore we've solved our bug with a system that allows us to add new features without breaking everything else. Pretty cool, huh? And the best part is that we no longer have to check case by case with boolean variables that the character will behave correctly. Finally, let's check the case where you want to add a new feature on top of what you already have. Once again, our double jump. To do this, we have to define a new state called double jump. And like I said before, this only makes sense when we're already jumping. So the transition will come from the jump state, there's no other way. So, if we're jumping and we press the spacebar, we'll jump again. And once the double jump is done, we'll go back to the idle state. Can you see the benefit now? It's clean, simple and easy. And more importantly, it will save you a ton of headaches as your game becomes more and more complex. So, in conclusion, state machines are more robust than making boolean checks all over the place. Trust me, if you go that route and your system is complex, you will face serious bugs, and maintaining your code will become a real headache. Second, keep in mind that fancy state machines are not the solution to everything. They are adequate from simple to moderately complex systems, but for example, it is not suitable for complex AI. For that, there are more suitable choices like behavior trees. But, on the other hand, they are simple to program, so I'd recommend that you use them whenever you can. And with that said, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you found it informative and that you have a better understanding of what the finite state machine is. Please be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.